Hello. Good morning. I hope you slept well. That was kind of creepy, right? Sometimes I'm creepy in the morning. Like, you waking up? Are you going to get up? Because I'm going to stay right here until you get up. You up yet? Are you up yet? The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to take you on a little ride this morning about warranty companies. You ever, it's, it's something that that most, most of you probably have never heard this way. <clears throat> I'm going to put something into perspective for you in, in kind of a deep way that <clears throat> using a story that's true, by the way, that affected me at one point in my life. So as I'm teaching you guys about stuff that I learned in the automotive industry, and I continue to use stories that affect me <clears throat> then you learn a little about the industry if you don't know and a little bit about what I've dealt with in my life so I met a woman years ago and I got married and I got divorced it lasted very like a short period of time I went off to Iraq and I was uh, abstinent, single, you know, well over a year and a half. So when I came home, I was lonely. And I met this woman. Things went really, really quick. Three months later, we got married. So we dated for about three months, and then we got married right after that. It happened fast. She was Indonesian, and she was not a resident. That's, that's for another story some other time. I did not know that when we got married. I didn't know you could get married to somebody that wasn't legal, but you can. Nobody checks that when you get married, or at least in the state of Louisiana they don't. You get married just to set a piece. It's quick, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you're done. About three to four, three to five months into our marriage, she wanted to get pregnant. And I was making good money at the time in the military, plus side hustling mechanic stuff. I thought, why not? I'm young. I can do it. So... We try to get pregnant. Nothing's happening. I thought something was wrong with me. So I go get checked out. I said, no, you're fine. You you have a very, very, very high sperm count. It's not, it has nothing to do with you. You are functioning just fine. So I have to convince her to go in and get checked. Well, eventually she went in to get checked. When she went in to get checked, they found that the fallopian tubes were so blocked from scarring that they had to go in and actually perform a surgery to clear out the scarring from the fallopian tubes or she'll never get pregnant. So they scheduled the surgery. I'm uh, in the waiting room as the surgery is going on and the doctor comes out about an hour into the procedure and says, it's not going to work. It's way too much and it's way too bad that we're going to have to, we would, we'll end up damaging the uterus with the amount of pressure and, the, and cutting of the scarring tissue that we're having to do. And then she really doesn't have a chance of ever getting pregnant. At least right now you have in vitro. 
the uterus is still good. So I says, okay, it was devastating. I'm married to a woman that I may never end up having a kid with. So, <clears throat> doctor calls us into the room and it's our, we have a, a an appointment after the procedure and stuff is up. And uh, like a week later, and we sit down with the doctor and the doctor says, you know, there's only a couple things that cause this kind of scarring this bad. And the main thing is drug abuse. And I suspect that there may have been some major drug abuse. And she started bawling her eyes out. And she said, yep. Yep. Almost my whole adult life up until a couple years ago, I, all I did was just use all kinds of different types of drugs. I didn't know this about her. I didn't know what was going on internally. I didn't know what kind of damage had been done internally because outside, she was just a long, black-haired, silky, shiny black hair, beautiful woman, put together very, very well, and everything looked absolutely perfect. You couldn't tell. The ride drove and sounded as it was supposed to. But internally, had no idea what was going on. She had never spoke about that part of her life. Hell, we weren't together that long to figure that stuff out long term wise to get into the personal matters. But I would suspect that when you're married, you talk about those kinds of things. She never brought it up. Why do I bring up this story? 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Customer states I have an engine noise. Vehicle was just previously on the channel. Had a charging system concern as well, where I had to replace the alternator and the engine computer. 2011 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokees have a problem with blowing the driver and the PCM for charging the uh, or keeping the alternator charging when it's supposed to. So you got to replace not only the alternator, the PCM as well, but also has an engine sound. Uh, get the engine running, half hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. Sounds like it's got the typical Hemi lifter tick. It's going to probably need camshaft. Uh, cams, maybe sometimes you can save the camshaft, but at least at least uh, lifters for sure. Call up the extended warranty company. Okay. Send us this, 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 and this. Get it. Done. Okay. Now I need an oil change receipt from the time the customer purchased the vehicle eight months ago to now. Well, they've only went 2,200 miles. Yeah, I know. But our policy is 5,000 miles or six months, whatever comes first. And just because they went 2,200 miles doesn't mean that oil should still be in the vehicle. Every six months, we want that oil changed no matter what. Luckily, they did have the oil changed. They had to go back to the old repair facility to get it printed out, their, their record. Okay, that's good. Now you can proceed with the repair. But in order to proceed with the repair, you have to secure teardown time from the customer. Well, it's like a 16-hour job. Uh, six, not, maybe not 16. Is it a 16-hour job? Anyway, because if we get inside that engine and it don't look good and it looks like somebody's abused it, we ain't paying for it. Well, wait a second. How's that the customer's fault? They just bought the vehicle at, you know, 92,000 miles. It's got 94 on it now. They don't know what the condition of that engine is inside before they purchased it. They just know it ran good and it looked good and sounded good when they bought it. Unfortunately, it's not our problem. So if you tear that engine apart, we see a bunch of varnish and scale buildup and sludge and stuff in there. I'm not getting paid for it. Well, I, what's the point of buying an extended warranty then if you guys have loopholes when you get out of major engine repairs like this? Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't.
you don't know what you're buying. With a used car, somebody else's car, you don't know what you're getting. With a human being, you don't know what you're getting. Everything may look good on the outside, but you don't know what kind of damage has been done on the inside. It may ride good, sound good, drive good, but when you start looking internally to figure out what kind of damage has been done emotionally, physically, medically in someone's life, you don't know. Sometimes people are very good at hiding stuff like that. Same thing with a car. 2,200 miles later and the vehicle is only eight months old, you don't know how the previous owners took care of that vehicle at 92,000 miles. You have no idea. You just know it rides good. You don't know what's going to pop up, when it's going to pop up. You don't know the maintenance history of it. Nothing. Even though I advocate for extended warranties because they do save people a lot of money, there are some downfalls to it. And there are some things that people don't know. I had to call the customer back up and said, well, you want to take a chance and me tear this thing down and then you owe me all the money putting this job back together, fixing everything? Or are we going to leave it the way it is and just deal with the little sound now until it gets worse? Either way, it's not going to be good. I hope you all have a great day. Be blessed. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And uh, something to think about. Leave me your thoughts. Have a nice day. I love you.